Well, good morning and welcome to Gear City Church. Would you stand with us? Y'all are a quiet bunch. You're a quiet bunch. Hey, we're so glad uh, that you've joined us today. Um, listen, we've just come to worship the name of our God. We know that um, last week was Easter. And to be honest, we're still on a little bit of a high from just celebrating Easter. So can we worship together this morning? Yes, let's do it. The dark tried to hide you and steal you away. And death tried to keep you inside of the grave. The enemy fought you, he tried but he lost. You cannot be stopped. When we cried for freedom, you tore down the walls. The weight of our burdens, you carry them all. Our fears and our failures hang dead on the cross. You cannot be stopped. Mover of mountains, breaker of chains, Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. We stand on your victory. We shout out your praise. Miracle maker, you're mighty to save. You're awesome. You're awesome in power, relentless in love. You cannot be stopped. Mover of mountains, breaker of chains, Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing. There is nothing. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing. There is no. You cannot be stopped. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing, there is no Mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has tried over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Oh, sing hallelujah. The battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Aren't you glad there's nothing that can stand against our God this morning? Come on. Come on, tell it. Yeah, we're glad there's nothing that can stand against our God this morning. We serve a good, good God. 
Yes. We serve a risen king this morning. And y'all know this song, so sing with me this morning. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing. Come on. Of the goodness of God. Yes. And all my life you have been in all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am made and I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice come on you have lived good, good God we serve. Wow. What a good, good God we serve. That he sent his only son to die for us. That at his name healing happens. At the mention of his name 
healing happens. Whether that be in sickness, whether that be in marriage, whether that be in brokenness. And what I love about our Savior is all you got to do is whisper his name. And then there's times I scream his name. But his name is powerful. What a beautiful name it is. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you, oh Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. But do you know that our king did not go back to the grave? He did not go back to the grave. He is still risen. He is still being revealed. Aren't you glad about that this morning? Come on. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. He silenced the
What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated this morning. There is now a report from the Center for Disease Control that they have the first U.S. case of that coronavirus. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is confirming the first case of human-to-human -human transmission. World Health Organization has declared the coronavirus outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. Good morning, Gear City Church. How you guys doing? All right. We are glad that you're here. For all of you that are in the house, look at somebody around you and say, man, you look good. For all of you online, we're so glad that you guys chose to join us. And as the team said a while ago, man, we, it has been 2,021 years and seven days since Jesus come out of the grave and he's still alive. Amen? Let's give him praise this morning. And sometimes we, we get after Easter and we're like, man, I, man, Easter's over. That's like in the past. No, we're still go we're working on another year and he's still alive. Amen. I love the fact of what Jesus does in our life and what Easter really means. And man, this past Sunday, what an amazing weekend we had uh, with Easter Sunday. We know for the past year, a lot of people has been uh, stuck at home and and some people have been in and out, some been in the hospital, some had COVID, some have it. But man, this past weekend, on Easter weekend, we had, we had 16 brand new families at Gear City Church. But listen, greater than that, listen, 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 you got to hear this. 15 people made a decision to accept Jesus. Let's give God praise for that. Those people actually made a step. 
Twelve people inside the building walked back to the start to follow table. Three people went online and said, yes, I've accepted Jesus. And I'm telling you, that's what Easter is all about. Amen. It's finding new life in Christ. And we're so glad that you're here. We're, we're beginning a brand new series today. And the name of the series is Contagious. Look at somebody around you and say, are you contagious? Are you contagious? And we're not talking about no COVID virus. But contagious in our in our living, contagious in our relationship with God. We're talking about being contagious in who we are as people. You know, there's people that are contagious every single day. And last week, and you've seen some in your seats, we gave you these little cards, contagious, uh, that you might invite somebody to come. And on the back it says, find out your results. Well, this next four weeks, you're going to find out your results of being contagious. So you can grab these. There's actually some in the lobby and invite your friends to come. You see, all of us are contagious at some point. Whether it's good or bad, we're we're contagious. And I'm not talking about an infectious disease, but I'm talking about our life, our spirit. I'm talking about who we are. Today, I want to talk about a contagious life. So what is a contagious life? And you begin thinking about a contagious life. See, I want to shift your thinking from contagious disease, contagious pandemic, into, uh, into really what it means in being contagious and living your life. We know that there are a lot of people that are contagious with their smile. You know somebody that's contagious with their smile? Look around you right now. See the people that are smiling. And don't point out the people who's like, look like they've been sucking on a sour lemon all day. Some of you know who you are. You're staring at me right now. You don't even like that I said that. But be contagious. There's people that are contagious in their attitude. They're contagious in in how they're living life. They're contagious in in what they're doing and following Jesus. They're contagious in their attitude. I mean, everything about them is like contagious, man. You just want to be around those people. Have you ever seen those people before? They're just people you want to be around. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, nobody even knows anybody like that, right? I said, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so you see those people who are contagious, but then you see those, those people as well who are the, the ultimate epitome of like contagious joy. They've just like got joy. It's like joy just flows out of them all the time. There's, there's just like this joy, and every time you're around them, you just see it. I like to be around people who are contagious. I could point out a few people who are contagious in that way, but then there's the people who are contagious at like being a Debbie Downer. You know those people? Oh, yeah pessimist about everything I mean no matter how bad it is even though it's rained for several days this week and the sun's shining today they're going to find something to be negative about negative Nelly don't be contagious in that way in your in your uh your outlook on life and in being pessimistic you see because there's something going on in our world right now there's something that's been going on in our world for two thousand 21 years and seven days since Jesus rose from the grave. There's a pandemic, all right, but it's a pandemic of brokenness. A pandemic of brokenness. Where there are people that are are hurting. There are people in our world. There are people that are listening in this room. There are people, some of you that are on live stream right now, you you are living in this, this place of brokenness and hurt. You see, there's a pandemic of brokenness in marriages. There's a pandemic of brokenness in relationships. There's this pandemic of of brokenness because of abuse. There's a pandemic of brokenness with with addiction. There are some people who are living in this brokenness I'm talking about of depression. You see, that pandemic, there is something that can be fixed in that. And it's only Jesus. It's always been Jesus. It'll never be about anything more than Jesus. And Jesus is the healer. You heard that this morning. He is the healer to every circumstance. He's the healer to your life. He's a healer to your marriage. He's a healer to your health. He's a healer to your abuse. He's a healer to your past scars. He's a healer to your loneliness. He's a healer to your depression. You see, what I'm talking about today, this pandemic of brokenness can only be fixed by Him and Him alone. So many people... We all know so many people who are living in a pandemic of brokenness. Our eyes have been focused on and our minds have been focused on COVID-19. But I want to tell you there's a greater pandemic than the COVID pandemic. Because you see, people can die, but if they don't know Jesus, that's worse than getting COVID-19. 
You see, the, the pandemic of brokenness, where there's hurt, there's abuse, there's loneliness, there's depression, there's brokenness in marriage, there's brokenness in relationships, there's people who are completely separated from God whatsoever because of addiction and sin, crime. You see, that brokenness is what Jesus called those who are followers to make an impact. He called those who are followers of him to make an impact in this world. And I want to tell you exactly how he said it. In Matthew chapter 5, the words of Jesus. If you're reading out of a, a, a paper Bible, the words are in red, and this is what it says in the Passion Translation. It says, your lives light up the world. Stop for just a moment. Could you think about how your life can light up the world? A broken world, a depressed world, a hurting world. This brokenness of pandemic, Jesus said this. He said, your lives Light up the world. For how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop? And who would light a lamp and then hide it under an obscure place? Instead, it's placed where everyone in the house can benefit from its light. So don't, so don't, get this, so don't hide your light. Contagious. Don't hide your light. But let it shine brightly before others so that your commendable works will shine as light upon them. And then they, everybody say then they. The then they he's talking about is the brokenness of our world. He said then they, those that are believers, those that are followers of Jesus. He said let your light so shine. It says then they, everybody say then they. Then they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. I want you to know that he has called us to be contagious. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Shine all around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? Some of you know it, some of you don't. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine all over the neighborhood. I'm going to let it Hide it under a bushel. I'm not going to hide it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine. Jesus made the plain statement. He said, your lives light up the world. I want you to think about just how contagious you are. Some of you still got that old sour look on your face. You're sitting there in live stream. You're like, who's he think he's talking to? Yeah, I can be sour all I want. Yeah, and you're contagious. People don't want to be around you. You're a Debbie Downer. Everything's always wrong in your life. Let me tell you, pick yourself up because Jesus died on the cross for you and he is still alive today. He's still alive. As long as you're breathing, there is hope. And some of you have given up hope. Stop giving up hope. As long as you're breathing, there is hope for your life. There's hope for your marriage. There's hope for your addiction. There's hope for your brokenness. There's hope for your depression today. I want you to know that your relationships, God can restore those. I want you to know that your loneliness, He can fulfill that. I want you to know that the scars from your past, He can soothe those over and give healing to your life today. So many times, we're contagious in the wrong way. What does contagious even mean? Contagious, to spread to or to affect others. Ask yourself, am I contagious in this life? Am I contagious? Man, sometimes I'm around people, and it, it takes me about 2.2 seconds to realize I don't be around them very long because they're so contagious in a negative attitude. They're so contagious in the lack of joy. They're so contagious in, like, just thinking everybody's always against them, living the victim mentality. Let me tell you, the devil is the victim, and he wants you to feel the same mentality. He was cast out of heaven a long time ago. But see, you have an opportunity to make heaven your eternal home. You've got Jesus who loves you, who died for you, who wants you to be healed today. Pick yourself up. Look at somebody and say, pick yourself up. Man, stop it. Stop it. To be contagious, what does it mean to arrive at this place where you're rubbing off on other people? Don't hide your light. Don't hide it. Let me ask you this question. Do others desire to have what you have? When you're around other people, did they desire 
the joy? Do they desire the contagious spirit? Do they desire the integrity, the character that you have? Do they desire what you know deep inside of you that drives all of that, which is being a follower of Jesus Christ? Today, if you don't know him, if you don't know what it means to be a follower of Jesus, I hope and pray that there is somebody in your life, somebody that you see, somebody that you're around, that what they have, you want some of it. But let me ask those of you this, that are followers of Jesus, are you contagious? Do they listen to you talk and want what you talk about? Do they watch your actions and they... They're like, man, I, I wish I could do that. Contagious. There's a story in Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4. And there's a statement that's made for such a time as this. For such a time as this. You see, this story that I talked to you about in Esther chapter 4, I'm not going to read the entire story, but there's this Jewish lady who was chosen to be the queen to a Persian king. And her cousin Mordecai, what was telling her, hey, this is your time, this is your moment, this is what God has called you to. I want you to know that you and I have been called, we've been placed, we've been put in a place of position to where we are, this is our moment. You see, Mordecai, who was Queen Esther's cousin, told her, hey, you, you, you're a Jewish lady placed with a Persian king. And you see, the one in the king's court is, is ready to kill all the Jewish nation to annihilate all of, of Jewish people. But she was so caught up in herself, so caught up in the moment, so caught up in, in who she thought she was and the place she had arrived at in, in my moment. Can I just say this to you? To you and I who, who maybe are followers of Jesus, don't be so caught up in the moment of you being a follower of Jesus. It's great that you've been following Jesus for five years or 20 years or 30 years. But don't be so caught up in the moment that you think you're better than anybody else who is still living in a life of sin. Because I want to tell you, we're all sinners saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. I am nothing without Him and you will be nothing without Him. And what happened here is, here is Esther in this place of prestige, this place of, of I've been placed here. And she's living everything for herself. Well, if I... I'm just living in the moment. I'm living for what's for me. And Mordecai says, hey, be careful. For such a time as this, you've been called. You've been placed. This is your moment. You see, God had opened doors of opportunity by placing her there in that moment. Can I tell you that you've been placed where you are for such a time as this? Kingdom purpose, kingdom calling. You've been placed in that moment. This is our time for such a time as this. And to miss your kingdom, your kingdom assignment because you're so caught up in, in what you think and what you think that everything is about you and what, what you want and how you're going to arrive at goals. I want, I want to tell you something. Don't miss your kingdom assignment. Every single one of us have an assignment from God. We have been assigned this place, this location, this place of employment, this family, this husband, these children, the place that I live in my, in my neighborhood, the people that I sit across the room with in class, the people that sit in the cubicle next to me, the people that are down the line when you're there working in the manufacturing company. I want you to know this is your time for such a time as this. This is your moment. This is your time. You are called to this day. You're called to this situation. Some of us are so worried about whining and complaining about all that's going wrong. You've been called to this moment. This is your day. Thank God God didn't call me to live in the early 1800s where they took a bath about every three weeks. And they rode a horse everywhere they went. And if they were going to travel from California all the way over to the East Coast over by the New England states, it took months to get there. This is my moment. This is where God has called me. I want you to think for, with me for just a moment. Calm your heart. Settle your mind. You are going to die. just like every single person that came before us. 
Most people listening to this message today don't even know your great grandfather or grandmother's name. Most people in this room have never even thought about who their great great grandfather or grandmother even was. But you know what? They live their life just like you and I. And get this in 75 years from now, nobody will remember your name. They'll know nothing about you. Because life is but a vapor says it in the epistles here for a moment and just like that it's gone and what you do now matters how you live today makes a difference think about am I contagious look around your life and look around where you are look around the place that you've been called to the job that you've been placed at, the neighborhood where you live, the people that's in your circle of influence. Sometimes we get so caught up in going through this life, and here was Esther. She was just caught up in the moment of, of where she was. But Mordecai, he, he came and he, he kind of slapped her around a little bit and said, hey, listen, you got to understand something. If you don't step up in this moment, all of the Jewish nation is going to die, and you're a Jew. And you're going to die and your relatives are going to die? You've got to do something. Can I tell you today, if you and I don't do something in this moment for such a time as this, if you and I don't take our place, step up to the plate, if we don't arrive at the moment and say, this is my assignment and God has called me here and I'm going to do something with what he gave me. I want you to know that we've been called to that. Don't miss your kingdom assignment. Matthew 5 says your lives light up the world. This is our time. This is our moment. Instead, a lot of times we sit around thinking about what is bad, what's hard, what's terrible. Please change it all. Just might you think today that he placed you in hard, terrible, difficult for a reason? Might you think along with me today That he placed you in COVID-19 pandemic for a purpose? Rather than whining and complaining about how bad it is and when's it going to get get back to normal? I wish my life was different. And He's gave us every opportunity. This is the greatest moment of the church. This is the greatest moment for those that are followers of Jesus to make an impact in this world. But some of us are too busy doing our own thing. We're too busy worried about we don't like somebody that did this and we don't like the way the church done that and we don't like how people are doing other things. What about just stepping into your assignment? This is our assignment. This is what God has called us to. You see, you are a gift and gifts are meant to be given. You are a gift. Think about this. Gifts are meant to be given. God created you to be a gift to some people. God created you to be a gift to the people that you impact, to your family, to your friends, to your co-workers. For such a time as this, you are a gift. Think about in your own life, how have I impacted other people? Am I contagious? Or am I contagious in the wrong way? You see, those gifts that he's given to us are not our own. Can I say to you today, don't waste your gifts. Don't waste your gift to others that God has given to you. What could you be more contagious about in your spiritual life? Maybe contagious kindness. Maybe a contagious smile. Maybe a contagious attitude, but not the wrong attitude. Maybe a contagious joy that just flows out of you. And rather than whining and complaining about all that's going wrong, what about a contagious spirit? That when you're around people, they want to be around you. A contagious spirit. That rather than other people rubbing off on you, you rub off on them. I've been around people before. I could name some people. 
that are listening online and in this room, they, I just want to be around them. You know, I want to be around them because they're contagious to me. I love their joy. I love their passion. I love the heart that they have for other people. Contagious. So contagious kindness. Maybe, maybe it's contagious character. Maybe you need contagious character in your life. Could you be more contagious in your character? In how you live your life, in your integrity? Could you be more contagious in, 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 in the character that you have, that you live out before other people? That you live a life that is blameless? Could you be more contagious in your generosity? In your giving of yourself, giving of what God has blessed you with. Could you be more contagious in the things that God has given to you? That you could impart to other people. Contagious. Man, to be contagious, to, to spread to, to infect others, if you will. Man, I want my life to be exactly that. To be contagious. I'm going to ask you if you would online and everybody in this room for a moment to just shut your eyes don't worry nobody's gonna come thump you on the head safety team is watching but listen for a moment close your eyes with me now I want you to think who have I infected with my contagious life Yes, I'm letting it sit for a moment. Just keep your eyes closed. Their faces, their names, the level of your relationship with them. What type of impact have you made? Now open your eyes. I trust that you realize you're a gift. And the gift that you have is meant to be given. Nothing is as contagious as enthusiasm. Nothing at all is as contagious as enthusiasm. I want you to think for just a moment. Does my enthusiasm for God really display itself to create a passion in others for Jesus? Does my enthusiasm for life, does it really make an impact in people that, that they want what's inside of me? I love the fact that you're a great business leader. I love the fact that you sit on city council. I love the fact that you've been at the same job for 25 years. I love the fact that you've got an education and a college degree. And I love the fact that you have built your wealth. I love the fact that, that you've got a great family. I love the fact that you're a good father or a good wife or that you're a great kid. But you see, what I want to know is how well do you love Jesus? How contagious is the Holy Spirit flowing out of you? How passionate are you for Jesus Christ in your life? Wealth is great. A good father is great. A great husband, it's awesome. Building your wealth and being a business owner and sitting on city council and working at the same job 25 years. Congratulations, that's awesome. But the question I have for you, how passionate are you for Jesus Christ? You see, nothing is as contagious as enthusiasm. But you're passionate about your love for Jesus. You're passionate about wanting to serve Him. You're passionate about wanting to live your life, to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus and Him alone. How passionate are you? How contagious? How enthusiastic are you? Jesus made this statement, your lives light up the world. And a city set on a hilltop 
you can't hide it. He said the light is meant to give light to the entire house. Don't hide it. But let it shine. The enthusiasm you have. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine. Contagious. Are you contagious in your life? Are you contagious in your passion for Jesus? Or are there other things about you that you're contagious in that keeps you from the passion for Jesus? If you're listening to this message today and you're dealing with struggles, sins, you're dealing with things that, that are weighing you down, Scripture says lay aside every weight and every sin. Everything's not sin. Sometimes there's just weight. And some of you, maybe the weight is people you're running with. You're running with the wrong crowd. They're pulling you down. The weight for some of you is being pulled down by, by addiction that's controlling you. I want you to know today, he wants to set you free. Who the Son sets free is free in me. I want to pray for you today that your heart, your spirit, your life, be contagious would you bow your head with me at home and in this room Father thank you for the power of your word God I thank you that you have called us to live a contagious life to be contagious in our love for you Lord recognizing that this is my time this is my moment God you place me in this location with these people with these relationships with this, these co-workers, God, with these people I go to school with, you place me here for such a time as this. And Lord, if I don't make a move, if I don't do something, they're going to die without a Savior. I pray that my contagious life of serving you would flow over onto them. Now, Father, I pray for those that may be listening today in this room or at home that maybe they don't even know you as Savior. They've never even really made a decision to follow you. Lord, I pray that in this moment, they recognize you love them. And God, that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross. That in this moment, I could choose you. That in this moment, I can say, Jesus, I need you. And God, that in this very moment, right now, God, that they'll make this their hearts cry. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, I recognize that I'm a sinner just like every other person on this planet. But Lord, today I want to make a decision to follow you. I want to I ask you to forgive me of my sin and forgive me of, of all the wrong that's in my life. And God, I know that I've messed up, but today is the day. This is my moment. God, I want to live a contagious life that others can see Jesus in me. So Lord, I pray for, that you'd forgive me. And I ask, Lord, that you'll accept me as your child. And I receive you as my Savior. I make that my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that you can live a contagious life. And if you made that decision today to accept Him as Savior, it's the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. If you're at home and you made that decision, it's the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. And for those of you that are already followers of Jesus, I want you to think about this. How am I impacting? How am I being contagious to people I work with? people that I live next door to, the people in my family that don't know Jesus by how I live my life every single day. If you made that decision to follow Jesus today, it's called following him. Start to follow is what we call it. And we want to give you a start to follow packet. It's pretty simple. It's a new believer's Bible and it's a book. And the book just has next steps in it to help you to make the best step that you can in following Jesus. If you're in this room and you made that decision, at the back of the auditorium, there's a big banner that says, Start to Follow. It looks just like this big arrow. I'm going to invite you to stop back there. There's someone there who wants to celebrate with you and hand you a Start to Follow packet. If you're online, last, last weekend, three people online said, Yes, I want to follow Jesus. If you'll just type in the comments section, Start to Follow, we'll contact you and we will mail you a Start to Follow packet. Congratulations on the best decision you've ever made in your life. Would you celebrate with me today with those people? Congratulations to you. I want to encourage you in this. Those of you that are believers, don't take it too lightly. 
15 people last Sunday are going to heaven because of because they found Jesus and today somebody else made that decision and we're so proud of you so proud of you hey we love the fact that God has connected us to be able to make a difference in this world one of the ways we do that is through an organization called Convoy of Hope we love partner with Convoy of Hope because of our partnership with them every time that they go out to disaster relief every time that there's a tornado every time there's a hurricane any disaster that happens in the United States and around the world, they respond. We're part of Convoy of Hope. If you do not know that, here at Gear City Church, we support Convoy of Hope on a regular basis. And we love the connection as God has given to us. Not only do they do disaster relief, but they feed children around the world. More than 380,000 kids are fed every single day in multiple countries. And you and I are part of that because of your faithful generosity. I want you to check out what we partner with with Convoy of Hope. Check this out. All over the world, there are empty plates at the table and countless empty seats. In the famine, in the flood, in the aftermath. A full table is a fantasy. When you are eating nothing, going nowhere, when every road is a dead end and every cupboard is bare, a full plate is a fable. Then suddenly, love arrives. Faith gets to work and hope rolls up its sleeves. When hope sets the table, seeds become sprouts, become gardens, become fields. Future sinks its roots into the good earth. When hope sets the table, girls grow into women with the power to chase their dreams, to find their destinies, and weave their love into communities too strong to unravel. Hope sets the table, bright eyes shine with confidence that comes from a full belly and a sharp mind sparkling with grand dreams and electrifying visions. Convoy of Hope has worked tirelessly to build that table and millions have taken a seat. Now we ask you to join us, to put your love to work, put your faith on the line, share the hope that's in your heart, so please, pull up a chair, let us break bread together, and let hope set the table for millions more. Convoy of Hope. I love that organization. It's so powerful, and we can be here in Rolla, Missouri, and be a part of something so much bigger than what we are. And so I love the fact that with Convoy, they even... Um, have an opportunity for the kids to be involved. I love when Gracie comes to me and says, I want to donate a dollar to help feed these kids. So you guys will learn more about Convoy of Hope over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we just want to say thanks for being here today. We love seeing your faces. We love seeing the comments and the people watching online. I was standing backstage and I can see the comments rolling through. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We want to make sure we stay connected with you. So um, some of you are new faces to me. Some of you are new online. We'd love for you to connect with us. So you can do that a couple of ways. The first way is you can text um, GC guest to 94,000. It's on the screen. It's um, on the screen online as well. And that will link you to our online guest card. If you would like to fill that out today, we have a guest gift waiting for you. If you're here in person, if you're online, we will put that in the mail tomorrow. So you will get that this week. You can also, if you'd rather fill out the card that's in the seat back, or you can click the link that'll be online as well. And if you are wondering, what's my next step? I'm here at the church. How do I get connected? How do I be a part of such an amazing church family? I might be a little biased, but you can fill out the next steps card that's in the seat. You can also click the link online 
but that will help us get you connected to baptism if maybe that's your next step or child dedication, which both of those we have coming up within the next month and you'll hear about those next week. Um, but we wanna be able to help you move further in your walk with God. So you can do that today. And if you have any prayer requests, that is something that we are so, so passionate about here at Gear City is prayer. We have a prayer team that prays throughout the entire week. They come early on Sunday morning. They pray over every single seat that is in this auditorium. If you have a need today, we would love to hear about that. So you can fill out the card that's in front of you. Um, you can also email prayer at gearcitychurch.com. That goes straight to the prayer team, and then they send it out to the pastors and everybody else. Um, so thank you for allowing us to partner with you in prayer. And also give us your praise reports because we want to celebrate with you as well. Now, if you're part of our family today, this is the chance we give you to give back to God. And so Eddie was talking about a gift today, and our gifts are meant to be given away. And I read something that I'd saved in my phone a long time ago, and it talked about when you love someone, you give them gifts, right? You want to shower them with appreciation. You want to give your kids gifts all the time. And so if we love our God, we want to give him something. We want to give back to him because we just remember everything we have comes from him. So I'm going to challenge you in that today as you give is just think of God as someone you love that has given you everything you have. So you just want to give back to him because he's going to bless you when you do that. So if you're a part of our family and you want to give, we have multiple ways. So here in the building, you can use the envelopes that are in the seat backs and the containers are on your way out as you exit today. You can also give online at any time at gearcitychurch.com or my favorite, the easiest to me is to take out your phone and you can text the amount to 84321. So we thank you in advance for your giving. If you would bow your heads today. Lord, we are just in awe of all that you do, God, for us, for those in our lives, Lord, for just everybody, God, that trust you, God. I pray today that we just hand everything back to you. We know, God, that you're going to take what we give. You're going to multiply it, God. You're going to bless us, but you're also going to help us reach those who are so far from you, God. I thank you for the vision that we have here, God, for those who are lost, who are hurting, God, those who need you in their life, Lord. We thank you for the gifts that you give us. We thank you for um, the fact that we can be contagious for you, God. And I just pray blessings today, God, over every single person that gives today throughout the week, God. I, I pray blessings over the kids today that bring their tithe and their offering, Lord. And we thank you for everything you've blessed us with. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Before I dismiss you today, I want to make sure you know that this Friday night coming up is our next Better Together Live marriage event. So if you are engaged... Or if you are married, this is a, event is for you. If you are dating, I'm sorry, you're out on this one, right? We'll have something else coming up for you. But if you are engaged or you are married, this is our first one we've been able to do in over a year due to COVID. So that happens right here in this building. So we are providing a date night for you. There's going to be dinner. There's going to be fun. There's going to be free child care. So no excuses. I know you might work a long, hard work week but it's gonna be set up. All you have to do is attend. You don't have to plan anything. You don't have to pay for anything. You just have to show up. Um, so we wanna invite you to come to that, but you need to know this, that registration has to close on Wednesday. So you have today until Wednesday to register for that event. It will be closed after that. We can't take any more registrations because we have to provide the food and the staff and the childcare people. So um, we will not be able to add anyone. So if you have friends, you have family that want to attend, get them to sign up pre-Wednesday, right? So if you email us Thursday or Friday, we're going to have to say, I'm really sorry, but you're not going to be able to attend this one. So this Friday, don't miss out. Better Together Live right here in this building. We're so excited. You can register online. You can go out to the host table. Um, it'll be seven to nine on Friday night. So we're excited about that. If you have questions about anything going on, we have our hosts located out in the lobby at guest services. They can answer your questions. They can take your cards if you filled out any of those. If you filled out the GC guest um, form online, just tell them you did that and they will give you a guest box for that as well. So thank you guys so much for being here. You are dismissed. <laughs>